Good morning, morning. and welcome. Uh, It's nice to be here, fresh off our our vacation uh, for our one year anniversary. My husband and I went on our honeymoon, so. (laughs) so we went to North Carolina and had a very nice time and even saw some bears. So if you wanna hear that story, let me know later, I'll tell you. Mm-hmm. Good. All right. I ate all your food, huh? <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> um, a few other announcements we have. Uh, this Tuesday, our parish is providing the meal for manna. Uh, I believe we are catering it from Papa Duke's, um, so we are transporting the food and serving, and Heidi is kind of organizing that, so if you are able to help, let her know. And we've got a few other announcements Royce is going to share, and then I know Sally has one. Uh, First announcement is we have council meeting on Tuesday at 7 p.m., Um, I don't know whether that's going to be totally Zoom or in person or a combination, but we will let you know that whenever I find out from Pastor Susan how we're going to do that. The second thing is we have a car wash scheduled here on Saturday, October 8th. There are two shifts, one from 8.30 to 10.30 and then one from 10.30 to 12.30. So if you could sign up for that, that would be greatly appreciated. And the final announcement I have is in regards to coffee hour. Moving forward, coffee hour will be held every week. Um, And there's a sign-up sheet in the Nardex. Somebody can sign up to serve coffee, and somebody can sign up to uh, provide donuts. In the past, you could get the donuts. The, The donuts were always gotten at Giant Eagle. But moving forward, the person who signs up can get whatever they want to get, bring them, save the receipt, and there's a reimbursement form out on the bulletin board. You need to fill that out, submit that with your receipt, and you will be reimbursed for that. If you want to provide home goods that Sunday, that is fine. So coffee hour is only going to be what's ever provided, whoever providing that. For today, for example, they're just going to be coffee. There's not going to be any... uh, donuts because nobody signed up for that but going forward that's how that's going to work so you can you can sign up for as many Sundays as you want you might want to sign up for the first Sunday of the month or the first and second Sunday however you want to do that but that's how that's going to work Barb okay 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 So those are my three announcements. Thank you.
Please stand as you are able. We are gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our understanding. Amen. Dear friends, together let us acknowledge our failure to love as Jesus loves. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. We have failed to be good stewards of your creation. Place us on the path that leads to life and be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven and you are made whole. God makes the way to new life in Christ who meets us on the road. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, continue in God's abiding love. Amen.
Let us pray. God among us, we gather in the name of the Son to learn love for one another. Keep our feet from evil paths. Turn our minds to your wisdom and our hearts to the grace revealed in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament this morning is from Amos chapter 8, starting with the fourth verse. Hear this, you who trample on the needy and bring to ruin the poor of the land, saying, When will the new moon be over so that we may sell grain, and the Sabbath so that we may offer wheat for sale? We will make that effort smaller and shikel heavier and practice deceit with false balances buying the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals and selling the sweeping of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, surely I will never forget all their deeds. The word of the Lord. Let us pray responsively, Psalm 113. Hallelujah, give praise you servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. From this time forward and forevermore, from the rising of the sun to its going down, let the name of the Lord be praised. The Lord is high above all nations, God's glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, who sits in the room on high, but stoops to behold the heavens and the earth? The Lord takes up the weak out of the dust and lifts up the poor from the ashes enthroning them with the rulers, with the rulers of the people. The Lord makes the woman of the childless house to be a joyful mother of children. The epistle lesson is from 1 Timothy chapter 2. First of all, then I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving, thanksgivings be made for everyone for kings and all who are in high positions, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceful, peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and acceptable before God our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, there is also one mediator between God and humankind, Christ Jesus, himself human who gave himself a ransom for all. This was attested at the right time. For this I was appointed to herald and the apostle, I am telling the truth, I am not lying, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus said to the disciples, There was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property. So he summoned him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Give me an accounting of your management, because you cannot be my manager any longer. Then the manager said to himself, What will I do now that my master is taking the position away from me? I'm not strong enough to dig, and I'm ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do, so that when I am dismissed as manager, people may welcome me into their homes. So summoning his master's debtors one by one, he asked the first, How much do you owe my master? He answered, A hundred jugs of olive oil. He said to him, Take your bill, sit down quickly, and make it fifty. Then he asked another, and how much do you owe? He replied, a hundred containers of wheat. He said to him, take your bill and make it 80. And his master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation and then are the children of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth 
so that when it is gone, they may welcome you into the eternal homes. Whoever is faithful in a very little is faithful also in much, and whoever is dishonest in a very little is dishonest also in much. If then you have not been faithful with the dishonest wealth, who will entrust to you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to another, who will give you what is your own? No slave can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. The Gospel of our Lord. Well, that response was a, a lot stronger than earlier at Van Kirk when it was kind of like, praise to you, O oh Christ. <laughs> because that is a complicated gospel text today. I think it honestly raises more questions than it does provide answers. And um, so we're going to wrestle with it. And I think as we do that, you know, it's helpful to keep in mind when we're unsure of what exactly Jesus is saying, to keep in mind the things that we do know about God and about Jesus and what he has taught. And sometimes it's helpful to also consider some of the other texts and how they relate. So we're going to start with Amos today. And the Old Testament prophets like Amos were often called by God to bring messages of the consequences that were awaiting the people if they didn't stop messing around. And, you know, people don't like to hear that, of course, so prophets weren't usually popular. But God uses them often in the Old Testament to speak to the Israelites, to God's people, because of this pattern that they kept falling into. They would trust in God, then along the way they would forget and turn away and mess up usually a whole lot. And then God would send a prophet or someone else to bring a message um, that, you know, God was going to wipe them out. And usually the prophet or someone else close to God would, would convince God to ease up a bit. And so God doesn't destroy the people, but punishes them in some other way. And then the people see the error of their ways and turn back to God for a little while until the cycle starts all over again, which, of course, we can't possibly relate to, right? <laughs> Looking at these four verses of Amos in particular, he was warning the people against using and abusing the poor and against valuing work and money more than the rest, more than rest and Sabbath. This concept of Sabbath begun with the Israelites is not exactly what most of us think of today. In modern language, Sabbath has become translated as simply a day of rest. That God rested on the seventh day of the creation story, so we rest and worship on the seventh day of the week or that's what we think we're supposed to do, whether we do that or not. And we often deprive ourselves of true rest because we're always focusing on that next thing on the agenda, on our schedule, instead of now. We don't allow ourselves to receive this gift that God has given us. Sabbath for many of us is not a priority. Not even in this stripped down version we've turned it into today. And for the Israelites, Sabbath was much more than just an individual rest. It was a community practice. It was for the good of all creation, not just people. It wasn't just a rest from doing daily work. It was a rest for the land as well. It was a justice law designed to give rest to all of society. In the first five books of the Old Testament, we can see how the Sabbath laws create a society in which more life can thrive. The poor and the wild animals are provided with food. Slaves are given release to freedom after six years. Those in deep debt have their debts forgiven. 
God creates Sabbath as a gift to the people and to all creation to help us live and be fruitful and healthy and have abundant lives. So Amos speaks out against those who were grumbling about the Sabbath and putting their own understandings of work and money ahead of God's blessings and desires for creation. Those who put the value of money higher than the value of people. Those who participated in unfair trade and unjust markets. Those who literally put a price on people. Those who put their own desires above God's desires. And this is where we can tie in with today's gospel text. As I said, this is a confusing, complicated parable. Jesus seems to commend the guy who acts dishonestly. But maybe the focus here is more on how the manager acts once he realizes he's messed up enough to lose his job. He lessens the debts that the people owe. He practices Sabbath and releases them from some of their burden. And one of the commentaries that I read about this suggested that possibly the amount that he took off of their debt would have been the amount that he received in commission. So if that's true, he's putting the needs of those indebted above his own. He's commended because he focuses on the needs and fruitfulness of the community instead of his own individual desires. And throughout the narrative of Luke's gospel, Jesus calls our attention to those who are poor, oppressed, abused, marginalized, and vulnerable, and tells us to care for them, and establishes the practice of Sabbath so that the community as a whole can be fruitful. Following this parable, at the end of the part that I read today, we have this pretty well-known comment by Jesus, you cannot serve God and wealth. And this statement only makes sense in light of the parable, in light of the message of the prophet Amos. Money, Careers, markets, economic systems are not inherently evil in and of themselves. They can be a means for good. We can use these things to care for others, our families, our needs. But we can't be focused both on these things and on God and what God desires for our lives. Either our money will serve our faith or our faith will serve our money. Because what we do with our money, our time, our lives matters. Because we have been given these things as a gift from God. God blesses us with the gift of life on this earth and the gift of eternal life. And what we do with our life on earth is our response to the gift given to us freely in love and mercy. We, of course, are imperfect humans living on this earth and participate in systems that can be sinful and personal decisions that can be sinful. But God isn't just waiting for us to mess up. The question of our dedication, our service on the part of Jesus is not a request to give up everything that gives you life for the sake of dedication to Jesus. It's rather an invitation to dedicate ourselves to God who sees our needs, who sees the complex realities of our lives, who sees all that we are trying to do for the sake of God's kingdom, and sees that we are indeed faithful in much. God desires life for us and for all people and daily showers us with mercy and forgiveness and love. And that 
frees us to serve our neighbors, to wisely use the gifts that we've been given, to participate in Sabbath for the good of the whole community, and to live out the unconditional love of God. Amen. God has made us a holy people through our baptism into Christ Jesus. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good creation. God our Savior, Savior, you keep your church in faith and truth. Accompany those preparing for baptism or affirmation of baptism. Enlighten preachers, teachers, deacons, seminarians, and all who share your good news with the world. As we give thanks for your blessing, this congregation with abundance, instruct us in proper and faithful use of wealth and resources, that the congregations of our parish and the congregations of Painter Tan Irwin North Zion Baldrum Borough and St. John Newcastle will share generously with the poor, the underprivileged, and any in need. God of grace, hear our prayer. Ruler of the nation, you direct those in authority. Give our civil leaders, especially President Biden and Governor Wolf, wisdom and compassion so that they may live in peace, so that all may live in peace. Inspire public servants to follow the example of Dag Hammarskjöld and other curious, peace, courageous peacemakers that the, dig, dig, oh my, that the dignity of every person may be upheld. God of grace, divine teacher, 
you instruct your children to be responsible stewards of your creation. Show us how best to care for the earth and its resources and guide those who work to develop sustainable practices. God of grace, helper of the needy, you take the weak out of the dust and lift up the poor from ashes. Breathe justice into economic and social systems that perpetuate poverty and hunger. Rescue and sustain all who live in places of violence and unrest, especially in the Ukraine, Iran, Haiti, and bring healing and wholeness to the ill and injured, especially those we name aloud or silently. God of grace, God of glory, you gather your saints around your throne. Keep us thankful for the witness of those who have gone before us and bring us, bring us with them to the heavenly feast that has no end. God of grace, gathered together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, gracious God, we offer these and all our prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior. pray. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a bouquet of blessings and make us ready to share with all in need through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. The Lord be Merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promise, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is Jesus, conqueror of death and bringer of eternal life. Come and receive him.
Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The God who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. our triune God to serve in love. Thanks be to God. The peace of God go with you.